This CES 2020 coverage is brought to you by Corsair and Elgato Gaming. Both companies actually have quite a few products announced at CES 2020. You can go check out my second episode of CES to learn more. They got some really cool stuff, especially for streamers. So my day three of CES 2020 is finally wrapped up and we didn't actually see as much to talk about for my audience as we did the past couple days, but there was some pretty interesting stuff. We started today at the MSI booth, which had, you know, they had some new RTX 2080 graphics cards and a few new components and things on display, but they had a new range of the creator or the studio creator laptops, which when they first launched, it was all, you know, they had RTX Titan equivalents and 2080 Ti's. These actually have a range of lower end to kind of mid-tier graphics cards, which I like to see because there is, you know, there's an audience that wants creator-centric laptops that don't want 10-pound monsters that don't also need the highest possible in specs. So it makes them a lot more affordable, keeping the same, you know, small form factor. So that was pretty cool to see. And then we stopped by Thermaltake, who had so much rainbow unicorn vomit that... I started to become dizzy, but some of it's really cool. Like they had some absolutely gorgeous RGB RAM and some water-cooled RAM that I could see myself being really interested in using at some point. They had RGB power supplies, of course, um, and then they had some really cool distribution blocks and reservoirs that, you know, if you're doing a completely custom case setup, you can get some really cool stuff going. But they also had an entire case that was also a distribution block on the back, and that was interesting. That's something I would love to set up as a set piece, but I'd never want to move it ever again. Like a mineral PC. You build it, you never want to move it. But it was pretty cool nonetheless. And then they did have a really cool power supply. They're doing the uh, 80 plus platinum power supplies that were actually quite a bit smaller than the standard size. So that was pretty neat. And then they have a new program to control all of your RGB stuff, which, yeah. <laughs> uh, we ended up sneaking into Creative's booth and I did not expect to encounter what we found, but they have the new, what they're calling Super XFi audio processing. And I actually was able to get one of the amps myself to take home to start testing. And I've been listening to some music here while a certain someone was recording their video. Hello. <laughs> so Super XFi is their audio processing system that's based on computational audio. And so what they do is they allow you, you can use it without doing this, but it's better if you do in that they allow you to train their computational algorithms for your audio based on your specific ear. So at the actual demo, which I couldn't record of course, uh, they ended up putting, you know, like you would configure your surround sound setup, you know, you put a microphone in the middle of the room and do all the tests. They put microphones in our ears. Now I'm gonna shove a microphone up. They put microphones in our ears and did this whole sweeping test to try to configure the profile to our ears. When I loaded up the app, mine is not there. But the other way is you actually just have someone with your phone line the camera up with your ear and it will map out your ear canals and all of that madness. Because everyone has different sized and shaped ears and we perceive audio differently. And then it kind of helps fine tune. And then they otherwise just mix the audio to what is equivalent to a 7.1 or what they're calling 9.1 surround sound audio mix to get a more immersive experience. Now. I have been the guy who, for my entire YouTube career, has said, please stop marketing virtual surround sound, even with creative stuff. I've worked with creative for a long time, and I've said, don't bother. Virtual surround sound is pretty silly, especially for directional audio. The stereo mix is designed to get you what you want. And I think a game that exemplifies that is Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice. You load that up, even with the basic, you know, Oculus Rift uh, stereo headphones, you know where all of those voices are, and it's pretty terrifying. Well, with this, it was actually able to recreate the surround sound setup they had in the room. Many of us were sitting there pulling our headphones off, assuming they were like yanking our chain and still had the speakers running. The speakers weren't playing, it was just the headphones. And so that was really cool to see. And then they even had a music demo featuring a Rolling Stones song that was originally mastered in mono. And while it's not the same as if it was recorded in stereo or in some sort of surround sound master, it still spread out the sound stage enough that it used to, it sounded like you're listening to what I equate like if you're watching you know a music biopic of a band and they remix the song to be balanced for this the theater surround sound you know it's more of that immersive experience and so I was really really impressed like I said I got to take the amp home so I'm going to be doing a lot more testing with it I was already testing it while Jeff was recording his videos and certain music it's not the best with like I was listening to some EDM for pin for like pendulum and honestly the stereo experience was better overall but for movies and stuff uh, they showed a I forgot the movie name like 70 daggers or something they showed a, like a fight scene and all the different sounds you had involved 
that's going to be great. And what's cool is you get the amp, you can connect it. They have a few different amps and things like that. You can use it on your phone, on your computer, but they're also involving the chip in most of their, or at least a lot of their audio products moving forward. So they have some big new badass sound bar that has Dolby Atmos and all that. So you can blast your home theater, but then when you don't want to wake up your neighbors, you still basically can recreate that in your headphones with the super X5 stuff. So that's pretty cool. And I'm very much looking forward to the future of audio products because honestly we've had this weird stall and I was even talking about that like yesterday there's been a lot of headlines talking about creative recently being like audio products are mostly dead but no one told creative they're still making stuff who is buying them this is a new innovation that I think really builds upon what was a pretty flawed virtual surround sound system in previous years Passing that, we went over to the Alpha Cool booth to check out. I have been super stoked. I am going to be water cooling my Threadripper and RTX Titan because it gets a little toasty. Not quite as toasty as the, the uh, Team Blue side that I'm leaving, but it still gets pretty hot. And they had some cool stuff on display. Mod My Mods is actually starting to bottle and distribute uh, coolant fluid in the US directly, which helps get, to, get, to, get it to you faster, cheaper, and they can kind of validate the quality of it a little bit better because there's been some concerns with that even with some AIOs recently which has been fun uh, and so they had that on display Alpha Cool had some cool new uh, CPU blocks uh, they had an all-in-one GPU water block that you can actually remove the pump from and use it with any water block you want so you're not limited to that specific one that was actually what kept me from just slapping an AIO on my Titan in the first place and then they had some really cool custom builds on display including an X-Wing and uh, the giant Red Bull transforming display gaming system thing that looks like Professor X's, you know, hover chair or something. Uh, some really cool stuff there. Oh, and we also met up with a company called FSP. Now they had some really cool power supply tech going on, including, you know, an electric car charger, uh, but they had a dual uh, redundant power supply set up for a home server that actually fits in an ATX form factor, which is great when you're doing, you know, not normal rack mount chassis, which I think a certain someone's channel, you're probably going to see that on like tomorrow, if nothing else. Uh, so I'm, I'm very much looking forward to that as well. Um, but they also had, which appealed to me, they had this dual system in this ridiculous looking case, but it is really cool. Uh, it, it was called the T-Wings case, and it is a dual system case that they specifically see being targeted for game streamers. So one side is your gaming PC, one side is your streaming PC, but instead of all the dual PC builds like everyone's been doing recently in the 900D, where you have this tiny little streaming PC just kind of perpendicular to your gaming PC and buried under cables, or you put your GPU in front of it or something, both of them are on full display, full RGB water cooling, hard loop is what they had it configured as, although you don't need to stick with that. You know, fully lit up with cable manager management run through the middle so you never even see them. It looked phenomenal and that use case is fairly interesting. And it was, for what it is, it's affordable. It's clearly, you know, a crazy, you know, niche PC case. So it was like, I believe it was 500 bucks. Is that right? Yes. It was 500 bucks. But for something like that, you would expect it to be a lot more and so, if at some point I get the space to display it, we might see something like that because, you know, dual streaming PCs are something I should, you know, be talking about. <laughs> Moving forward, uh, that was pretty much it for today. I did want to mention, uh, we, we got stuck in, you know, traffic for like three hours total today, but I did want to mention uh, on Thursday, uh, we will be hitting the show floor and I am racing over to Samsung's booth because they announced today the Q9U which is like a higher tier model of the microphone I recommend the most, the Samsung Q2U. And this is a hybrid microphone, which means it's both XLR and USB Type-C, so you have flexibility to use it in different situations. I actually brought my Q2U with me so I can use it on my computer via USB or with my audio recorder over XLR. It's still a, you know, a big, beefy, dynamic microphone, so great for desktop streaming and blocking out your background sound. Uh, and then 24-bit and 96 kilohertz, which is insane, and it's only $200 which is a pretty killer price point. And actually, as soon as I get home from CES, I have a video going live about a $200 dynamic microphone that was taking the place from the Rode Procaster. And I think the Q9U may actually challenge this for that place. So suddenly my recommendations are getting sh shuffled around, but I am racing over there and demanding that I take a look at it. And Roland actually has a new mobile uh, audio streaming product coming soon that I'm hoping I can take a look at on the show floor as well. So that's coming up in, in you know the rest of CES. I am very focused on just the video editing and streaming side. So go check out Craft Computing's video if you want the PC hardware stuff because I'm not remembering all those specs off the top of my head. You guys see all the other videos. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your support. And for those of you who've said that it was really stupid of me to bring this super underpowered laptop to 
CES because you know Paul's Hardware is bringing a mini ITX rig and really editing. I've spent a total of 10 minutes between my two videos that I've rendered so far rendering videos because I'm the master of render optimization. Do you know who I am? I have videos linked in the description. Go check them out. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.